Y'all, welcome to the South Carolina Fall Forum. I am so excited we are all here today. Thank you for coming. I want to welcome our core members who've been working very hard over the past six months. It's great to be in the same room with you guys. I missed a couple of the July uh, meetings because um, I was out of town, but I'm just thrilled that all three cores are in the same room. Very, very excited. I want to welcome our North Carolina neighbors. We're really happy that you guys are here and you're going to share your passion and enthusiasm with us for what you do. Um, and I'd like to welcome our special invited guests. We hope that you hear uh, something today that inspires you, that moves you, and that you'll want to learn more about the discussions that our cores are having that are really focused on building a shared infrastructure around social determinants of health in South Carolina. Before I give you all a quick history about how we got to today, um, there are many thanks I need to make. First, it is to my project team and my admin team. So Ashley Moncrieft, Janisha Nance, and Holly Pope, and then out in the hallway we have uh, Katrina Plyler and Shannon Porto. They, y'all, have worked their tails off to get ready for today, and they've been working really hard <laughs> over the past several months. They are flexible because that is what this is all about, is being flexible and pivoting and, you know, changing directions multiple times. And I couldn't do it without them. They are my dream team. So I want to thank them. I'd also like to thank the co-chairs. So I was able to finagle and coax and um, like lure in six amazing, powerful women, Renee Leonard Gary and Carrie Rothschild to serve as our programmatic co-chair core or co-chair core co-chairs, uh, Melissa Fair and Summer Tebalt for our data core, and Vicki Young and Naomi Lett for our admin core. They, y'all, have done everything that I've asked of them. I've asked them to be candid and direct with me because I am not good at reading in between the lines. They are wonderful about serving as our support system and our sound, sounding board to really help us guide, guide us through this work. So thank you, thank you, thank you to my co-chairs. Y'all are wonderful. <laughs> and I really do want to take a minute for, to thank our North Carolina neighbors for driving down here and joining us today. I have a funny story I want to share, share with you. I, when I sent out the invitations, I was like, oh my goodness, it's getting so close to the September date. They're not going to be able to come. Oh my gosh, I was getting stressed. And honestly, I was, at that point, I was like, okay, if it's virtual, it's all virtual. It's going to be good. They all said yes to come into town. And then last night, we, we all went out to dinner and, um, I, you know, still just overwhelmed and thrilled that they were here. And then I learned that many of them have never been in the same room with one another. They have been doing their work virtually. So they had to come to South Carolina <laughs> to hug one another on our dime. I was like, this is perfect. So thank y'all. And I want to do a special shout out to Laquana Palmer for, with the Foundation for Health Leadership and Innovation. She really helped like, help me figure out, I'm like, this is what people want to know. Who are the people we should have from North Carolina? So thank you so much, Laquana. We're so thrilled y'all are here. So. Um, and last but not least, I really want to say thank you to Erica Kirby with the Blue Cross Blue Shield of South Carolina Foundation and Chris Collins with the Duke Endowment. And I'm not thanking them just because they invested in this work, but also because they really have made a push. We, with their leadership, I think like these conversations may not be where they could, could have been without them investing, not just their money, but their time. And so I just want to thank the foundations for doing that. So So for our special invited guests, I want to just do a quick primer of how we got here. Um, Back in 2019, the foundations were saying, so what is going on in South Carolina to address social determinants of health? So we did some interviews, um, talked to a lot of people, kind of conducted a landscape assessment to really understand what different organizations were doing. We talked to community-based organizations, healthcare systems, uh, safety net partners, payers, state agencies, just to understand 
what they were doing around addressing social determinants of health, what were the key challenges, and what are the opportunities that we have here in South Carolina. That work led into a design process where we formed a design committee. Many of you were members of that design committee um, and were presented the landscape assessment findings as well as a review of a, ver of a multitude of different action plans like the state health improvement plan, the community health needs assessment um, plans that were created, the rural health action plans. Looking at all of those to say, okay, where do we start? Like what target populations and what social conditions? And really what came out of that were two social conditions, housing instability and food insecurity. And then our target populations were mothers with children zero to five, adults with chronic disease, and individuals with mental health and substance use disorders. Are anyone surprised? No, right? So as part of that conversation though, the design committee made it very clear that we cannot talk about infrastructure building around social determinants of health without talking about the issues of structural racism and social isolation. And so we must not only recognize these two issues and their roles and how they affect health, but also we need to come up with solutions that ensure we're not perpetuating these problems. So the design committee also developed the governance structure, which is brings us to today, right? So we have three cores, our programmatic, our data, and our admin core. And they are really focused on coming to consensus around the infrastructure needs for South Carolina that will enhance the existing efforts um, that we already have going on in South Carolina so that we're more effectively addressing social determinants of health. And that leads me to say, this work started in 2019, but there's been a lot of work going on in South Carolina already to address social determinants of health. So we are by no means taking any credit for what's already been going on that's been amazing work. And so when I think about those um, organizations or initiatives that have been going on in our state, I'm gonna just shout some out, but I know there are plenty, plenty more. But I think about Live Well Greenville and Live Well Kershaw, Trident United Way, Pals and Spartanburg, Eastern Carolina Housing Authority, the Community Loan Fund, Feeding the Carolinas, I could go on forever, right? And then we have a lot going on at the state level with Food Share South Carolina, SNAP-Ed, SC Thrive, the Center for Community Health Alignments work, um, and the Alliance for a Healthier South Carolina, the Rural Health Action Plan, and Access Health, right? So they've been around, they've been doing amazing work. And so we really recognize the significant impact that they have had in our state. This work is really focused on infrastructure building. It is really about enhancing that amazing work that's already been going on in our state. And it really is just one small piece of the puzzle. This work is one small piece. It's not the end all be all. So we have a very packed day today, if you wanna show the slide. Um, there is no break this morning. So like, we're just gonna transition. So if you need to go, get up and go, you get up and go. Bathrooms are down the hallway. If you need to take a call, step on out. But don't be gone too long because you're gonna miss something important, right? When you first came in, we had some music playing. That is the playlist that you guys, our core members created. We will make sure it gets out to you. It's songs that we think motivate us or inspire us around this work. And again, I just want to welcome all of you for being here. I hope you leave here inspired and ready to work. Thank you. I am going to pass it over to Renee Linyard Gary and Carrie Rothschild, who are going to be even more inspirational and motivating than myself. <laughs> Come on, Gary. Well, that's not intimidating. Um, <laughs> yay. I'm Carrie Rothschild. I work in Spartanburg and I am with the health system there. I spent a lot of years working with Access Health Spartanburg and learned a lot of the information that I'm now so passionate about working with that, um, that group. And that is where I met Renee. And so, and so when <laughs> you reached out to say, Carrie, would you co-chair? I said, uh, and you said, Renee is co-chairing. And I was like, okay. Sure, <laughs> because she's been my go-to so for so long. Mm -hmm. um, I'm now Director of Community Health Policy and Strategy for the health system. Yeah, and Carrie, I think it's been, wow, probably 10 years so more. far. More yeah. than more than 10 years, <laughs> right? So our work started together through Access Health, as Pam mentioned, but I am now 
um, the Director of Diversity, Inclusion, and Health Equity at Roper St. Francis Healthcare in the uh, Tri-County area, Charleston, Berkeley, and Dorchester counties. So um, thank you all for having us today. Um, to begin, I would like to take a moment to recognize the people that are in the room. We are thankful for the team from North Carolina who joined us. But our South Carolina champions in the room, we really want to recognize you. So in alphabetical order, I just want to go through who's in the room <laughs> by the core, right? Because that's, <laughs> right? So the admin core, if you would please stand so everyone can see who is a part of the admin core. And you get to meet the coach here from early. <laughs> yes. So that, that is very important, right? And then even more important is our data core, right? The data-driven <laughs> strategies of how we move this roadmap. Would the data core team please stand for us so we can see who's in the room? Yeah, those are the people we call out the 10th, you know, 10th hour of the day because we need it right now because we have a meeting tomorrow or there's something going on. So thank you all for being in the room. And then last but not least, our programmatic core team members. Would you please stand? Thank you all for being here today. So on that roadmap, everybody knows I'm the analogy queen. These are the drivers, right? And they come back and let you know, I need maintenance. I need fuel, <laughs> right? So that's what our program at our core does. They really are the people moving the work and, and providing information back to us. We're going to so, have as much fun as they are. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, about, I'm about to say. So as I kick off this session here, I want to leave y'all. The music theme is intentional. But as I come into this room and see everybody many times for the first time, right, since we started this work um, in the winter of 2021, right, it's ain't no stopping us now. <laughs> so I want y'all to take that with y'all throughout the day, right? Um, so we have to pull add that to the playlist, Janisha, okay? So ain't no stopping us now. You know, we're on the move, we're ready, ready to go. So um, what I would like to do is thank you all again for being here, but first I wanna get to the why, right? That's like, so why are we here? Um, first, it's our first opportunity to be in the same room. Boy, North Carolina, that's a bonus one, right? To finally get in front of each other by being here in South Carolina, so thank you. Um, and so we've been meeting virtually and to finally see people in the room and if we wave our hands, we give everybody, right? We shake hands with everybody in the room, even if we're not, or rubbing elbows with somebody in the room. And so that's important. Second, we're here to be inspired. Um, I know many times when you're sitting in a room, I think we learned this best through our Access Health Network meetings, is that when you're in the room with individuals, sometimes the different perspectives that you get from sitting at the same table, you can take back to your wheelhouse and the work explodes sometimes, and you learn new things, um, but you also get to address the challenges together. And so that's why the other why of why we're here today. And then last, it's you know health equity. Um, I now have health equity in my title. That's a win, right? Like So you put that at the forefront. If you talk about the evolution and change that has happened over the last five years that a health system recognized how important health equity is, in order for us to get the diverse teams to be inclusive, that includes the extension out to our community. So we're living those missions that we put in front of us um, along the way. And so that's, that's another why. Um, and then also that health equity lens, that we also make sure that we be intentional and we help drive the work to make sure that everybody steps through the room each day, no matter where we work, no matter what core we're a part of, but we put on our health equity lens all the time. Um, and for many of us, it's been the nature of our work for the last decade or two or more, right? So with that, I want us to take the opportunity to learn um, so that we can oper operationalize this plan along the way, and you guys are the key to that moving the, the needle and getting momentum behind this work. And we've learned a lot already, yeah. and there's been a lot of research going on, and um, part of what we've learned, even though we were very much on Zoom and virtually meeting with each other, too, 
Um, and when the first time we came together as co-chairs, we had little stop sign name badges. So it was like green meant you could touch me or hug me. Yellow meant I like you, but stay just a little bit away. And red was like, uh, you know, hands off. Um, so it's really exciting to be in this room now and, and have so many people that are willing to be touched. And she's fully dressed in green, so you know you can touch her. I'm a green light, baby. <laughs> That's right. Um, some of what we've learned, though, is that this work is very new um, in the way that we are talking about doing it. And some of the research that's been um, done in formulating this plan to do this work uh, came across an initiative that was in 2014. And so that was kind of the first date that you found something of this magnitude. Um, but we know that a lot of work has been going on at the local level and all across the country and across the world. And it's time to learn from each other. Um, so we're, we're blazing trails, but we've also got others to, to learn from. We also know that even though there are examples to learn from, it's not one size fits all, and that each community is different, each state is different, and that we've got to be flexible and willing to adapt to that. Um, and then I think that the most important lesson is that this kind of work really takes courage, and we've got to be willing to be vulnerable, and we've got to be willing to just keep on course. So the other thing is we need to remember why, the why we're here. And so there will be a, a few videos that we'll have throughout the day to introduce some really important people to you um, to talk about the systems and how they are supported. And Janisha will go ahead and start this first video. So uh, we are all South Carolina natives. Um, we've lived here at least most of our lives. Yeah, we're just a family of three. It's me, my brother, and my mom. I do a lot of data entry kind of stuff, especially in like the medical sort of field, looking into getting actual like medical coding license and all of that kind of stuff. Um, I'm very fond of computers. I have two kids with special needs. So um, they're pretty young. So. Um, I just say I just stay home because they need me they're like full-time job already so I have to be there 24 7 and I'm not working I, I wish I could work but I can't because I have to take care of my children. I'm originally born and raised in uh, from Amarillo Texas um, I've been in um, South Carolina for the last six years um, I have two two girls um, they are both in school, 17 and 13. Okay. Um, my 17-year-old will be graduating this year. Um, just had found out about uh, almost a month ago, well, not, um, not quite a month, that um, she is expecting. And I work currently at Target Distribution Center, working Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, so 36 hours. Um, and I enjoy what I do. Uh, I'm just a warehouse worker, but it's room for opportunity out there. 